with us tonight. Thank you for coming to do church with us. Hope you really enjoy it. We actually have a special VIP room that we would like to yeah. get to know you better. Um, Daryl and his lovely wife, Miss Beth. She's out in the front door. She probably checked you in. Yeah. So after this service, please join us in VIP. Um, someone will lead you there. Just ask anybody. You'll get to meet Justin and Brittany. You'll also get to um, meet some pretty amazing leaders like my husband and David in the back. They're pretty cool. And Danny. <laughs> Danny will be there too. Danny Wolf, everybody. Yeah. Danny Wolf. Danny. Woo! Um, I only have one announcement for tonight, but it's a pretty awesome one. I want you guys to uh, put it on your iPhone calendar or tell your mom or however you remember stuff. There is a Fuse Field Day. Yeah. Saturday, April 27th from 11 to 3. It's at Atlantic Coast High School. There's going to be kickball, dodgeball, three-on-three -three basketball. Lou, he can, he can actually play basketball by himself and do a one-on-three and win, right? Well, no? Maybe. maybe. <laughs> um, but this is going to be really awesome. No sign-ups. They are going to provide Gatorade and some snacks. You do have to provide your own transportation. So it's, we don't have a bus taking you there or anything. So if you guys want to participate in that really awesome event, please show up. It'll be really fun. Okay? Um, we're going to go ahead and pray over offering. Mr. Daryl's going to come up and uh, pray for offering. He's a great youth leader as well. Yeah! Yes! Thank you. All right, guys, go ahead for me. Father God, thank you so much, first of all, for the opportunity just to be here in your presence and to hear the answers to some of the questions that we all ponder. Uh, thank you for the format that Justin has set up. I think it's really neat. Father, help us to realize that what we get each and every day, the provisions we're given, none of it's ours. All of it belongs to you, and you simply ask that we give a tenth back. And if we do that, that you'll open up the storehouses of heaven and pour out so much that we can't handle. Help us to envision that. And help us to lead by example. Because if we can do that, then uh, we can show the world some of the power that you have. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Jacksonville, we've been to the beach, town center, all over the place, and we're asking people, what do they think about the end times? So, I just have a question, what do you think about the end times? What do I think about the end times? I think if it does happen, it's not going to happen for a long time. To be honest, that's something I've heard about a lot. I think it's kind of comical. Um, I think it's kind of just made up, you know? I don't really think there's an end to anything. I think everything's very continuous. I really don't buy into that too much, you know. I feel like if it happens, it happens. Well, I do believe it's definitely coming. Uh, you know, um, this world is kind of a crazy place. I believe the Lord is coming to the end time. Okay. And in the Bible, it states that no one will know until the actual end of time. Are you preparing? Are you doing anything to prepare yourself uh, for the end time? Uh... Trying to work on my karma, but sometimes it's not really on my side. I'm not sure when the end times are coming, but I hope I'm prepared for them. I think that I am. So I live like fulfilling life. But I'm just living, man. I'm just like, I'm just going with the flow. Like, whenever my time, you know, whenever it's the day for me, it's, it's the end. You know, I'm not even looking forward to it, but that's a wrap. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not preparing for it either. The end times are coming because of the, uh, the evil inclination. You know, it's going to come to a critical mass. And when that critical mass approaches us, such as in the days of Noah, he's going to cleanse the world one last time. <laughs> What's up, dudes? And oh, there it is. How's everybody doing? Cool. Hey, man, um, we are in the end series. Uh, we're continuing on with our Q&A from last week. We still have some really deep questions that we're going to get into tonight. So y'all give it up for Pastor Bob, he's back in the house. I feel like we should have some kind of like symphony playing. <laughs> but uh, man, I'm, I'm excited about tonight. I think tonight it's going to get deep, it's going to get real. How many of y'all ready to get real? How many of y'all want to get deep? Some of you, some of you, a few of you. So uh, we, what we're gonna do, man? We're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. Um, I'm gonna pray real quick over the service and stuff tonight. 
So if you will, by your hands, Father, we thank you so much for your word, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for all the instructions and all the, the awesome stories you've given us to help us walk out our life, Father. Lord, we pray that you, you bless this tonight, Lord God, that you use us to speak, Lord God, and answer questions, Lord God. Father, because we don't have the answers, we don't know the answers, but your word and you give us the wisdom to be able to bring this out, Father. We love you, we praise you, and everyone said. Yes. That was a little weak. Everyone say it. Yes. Amen. Awesome, man. Well, um, we had two really big questions um, last week that I wanted to save for this week because I think that these will take a little bit more time. Um, and I think that we're going to do the, the devil one first. We'll, we'll, I think that'll be a there'll be a lot of tag on to that one. And uh, one of the questions was, if I'm a Christian, can I become demon possessed? How many of you have ever heard that expression? Like, you've heard people being possessed by demons. A lot of stories in the Bible. Um, some of you might have seen somebody that you're pretty sure was demon possessed. If you're from Louisiana, you see a lot of people that are demon possessed. Um, if you're sitting in this, no, I'm just kidding. And it's not your mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your parents, I promise. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I grew up, I grew up in a, um, a very... Like I said, non baptismal church. <laughs> we didn't know what we were. That's what I tell them. I said we were, we were quote unquote non denominational with Baptist tendency with Pentecostal rules. So I call this non baptismal. So that's where that came from. You like that? Um, and so I grew up in a church, and I, I for a long time I saw a lot of pretty crazy stuff. I mean, I've seen people like one. I'm not trying to scare everybody. Like you know, they're like, oh my god, it didn't happen. Um, I've seen people like actually on the ground slither like a snake, like try to slither. I've seen people make weird noises. Like we grew up in a church and, and it was some crazy stuff. I mean, like screaming and people going to see it or something. Like, at nine years old, that's something you don't want to see. What's wrong with that lady, mama? You know, <laughs> so, you know, and a lot of it, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we, we got a basic knowledge in, in, when I was a, a child on. On a lot of things, and one of the things that I remember some people in our church would tell us, and it kind of, kind of got. I was like, "Man, this don't make sense. That's kind of dumb." And I was always in afraid that like people would tell us, "If you have fear, that spirit will jump on you and it'll attach itself to you." And I'm like, "What? I'm afraid now. Thanks." You know, like I was good until you said that. But you know, there was a lot of times like I questioned that, like. Well, man, if I'm a Christian, then how can a demon take over my body and make me do things and all this stuff? And so when we got that question, I thought that was really good because that is a lot of people are told that when they're younger. You know, well, you better watch it. The demon will jump on you and take over. And, you know, and we grew up with people in our church that behind every bush there was a demon. And so it was like, you can't do this because there's a demon attached to that. You can't do this because there's a demon attached to that. And so if you do that, you're, you're all this. And so we want to jump into that question um, Pastor Bob, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about that. Like, you know, the question is, you know, if I'm a Christian, can a demon possess me? I'll give you the real, the real complicated, um, highly theological, intensely biblical explanation. No. <laughs> is that good enough? That's good. All right, if you're a believer... And Christ is in your in your heart. The Holy Spirit resides within you. How did the Holy Spirit get them? You invited him in, right? You opened the door of your heart. You invited him in. You confessed your sin. You, you gave him, gave up, you gave your life to God and invited the Holy Spirit to reside within you. Now, the only way that a, that a, a evil spirit, a demonic spirit, can get inside of you is by you allowing that spirit to come inside. Either by inviting him, it, them, her, whatever, or by doing things that would expose you to some demonic influence that would be, in a sense, a passive invitation. By doing some... some you know things that you're not supposed to be doing. You can say it. You can say it. Ouija, board, Ouija boards, going on the computer and doing crazy things on the computer, um, getting involved in seances. You know, you think about those things, and, and most of the time, your friends at school will come over. Just little, those are just little fun things. No, they're not. They're not. 
their invitations and their things you do not want to deal with. You do not want to expose yourself to. You do not want to give yourself over to that kind of influence. Because if you do, you're opening the door. Now, the Holy Spirit's in your life, but when, when you open the door like that, the, the, the influence of evil can begin to really become intensely active in your life. And you know, there will come a point, if you continue to open yourself up to that, that it will influence you so much that you will say, oh, maybe you might not overtly like you know, some of the real crazies, but you can invite them in. And then the demonic spirit can take over. But, it's, but if you're a believer, that's not going to happen real easy. I hope I confused you. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Does that make sense? Right. Now, there's another, another, that's possession. That's possession where that demonic spirit actually owns you. But there's another couple of levels of spiritual warfare that I think Justin was referring to, and that is spirit obsession or spirit, demonic spirit influence, where it's outside of you and it's influencing you. We deal with that all the time, just normal. Everyday life. Demonic activity is going on around this room right now. Demonic activity is going on in your school, in your home, in, in, in all the place. And so the demonic spirits are actively working to out to, to, to send you the wrong direction. And that influence is, is very real. And, and so that's demonic attack, demonic, demonic influence. But then there's a little bit of in between there where you become obsessed where it, it, it's not possessed, but it's not just influence, but there's a there's an over obsession, there's an over over in interest in spiritual demonic activities. But again, that it's a continuum where it's a slip, slippery slope where you begin to move away from focus on the Holy Spirit to interest and curiosity in the in the oh that's just innocent little fun to the point where you really become controlled and influenced by the negative way. You see this line? Don't go there. You know, a lot of times, like, it's, it's easy because a lot of times we want to pretend that there's not a demonic spirit, that there's not things going on around us. You know, and the Bible tells us, and I was trying to find, I can't remember where it was, that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against prince of powers and, and things that are going on around us. You know, Ephesians 6. And so, you know, um, there's, there's a war that's going on around you right now. Every moment, there's 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 a fight for you. You know, I, I always tell a story. My guardian angel is going to be super mad at me. He's probably going to punch me in the face when we get to heaven. And he's going to be bandaged up and say, that's for what you put me through type deal. Um, but there's always a battle going on. And a lot of times, like it's easy to kind of say, well, I don't want to think about demons. I don't want to think about things going on around me. But let me tell you something. It's real. Yeah. It is real. Right. It's It's happening. There are demonic spirits that are trying to tear you apart. They're trying to defeat you, trying to conquer you. You know, and uh, and it, it could be creepy, but I want to make something super clear. Because we can sit here and fear, you know, when you hear about these, these things that you can't see. And so we fear things that we don't see and we don't understand. And so for you to be afraid of a, a demon or the spirit, then you're saying, I just don't understand that. That's what it really means, because you don't understand, so you have fear of it. And so let me tell you something and make it real clear. Man, you don't have nothing to fear. Okay? God has given you all power over every dominion, over everything in this whole entire world. God has already given you authority and won that battle. Okay? And so a lot of times I hear stories, and I, I know a lot of you in this room have experienced some things. And when you're sleeping or, or in your room at night, you would see things and things would happen. And, you know, and then, you know, fear, and you're out of fear. But it's like, and I tell you, all the same thing. Man, you get up and you look at that thing in the face. If you see something and you say, I command you in the name of Jesus right now. You have no authority here. You have no power. I command you to go back. Go on. Get out of here. I ain't even putting up with that. I'm going back to sleep. You make, you make me angry. 